first of all, you know, broccoli did not exist all that long ago. That is a manufactured, man-made plant. So we can't say that that's something we evolved on. I can't say that's something that's necessary to life because it didn't exist when we were evolving biologically. And they don't tell you that. They don't say like, hey, broccoli's good until this point, And then you need to stop. So a couple of things she mentions about the benefits of, of sulforaphane and broccoli is that it decreases prostate, bladder, breast, and lung cancer risk. It has reduction in all-cause wow. mortality. A broccoli sprout drink increases benzene excretion by 61%. Cruciferous vegetables decrease heart mortality and positive effects on neurocognitive disorders and so on. Um, and so it's hard to balance the information that we get. One thing that I hear is that maybe the reasons why there's these benefits is because you're doing these tests on an averagely sick population, right? So if you cut out all the processed seed oils and the carbohydrates, and then you introduce broccoli to like a pure carnivore, maybe we would see something different. Like what, what are your thoughts about approaching information like that? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, it, it's uh, you, you raise a good point. You know, it, it's compared to what? That That's always the question to ask. What well, compared to what? Well, this in, improves longevity. This improves X, Y, and Z as compared to what, right? Because you, you have to have the base with which to compare that against. It gets better. Okay, better from where, right? What's your starting point? The starting point is the average American who is metabolically sick. 90% of Americans have at least one metabolic illness. 70% of Americans are either overweight or obese. And most of the rest of the world is close behind. Actually, some are past that. America is not the most overweight or obese country in the world. We're like 20th, right? So that, yeah, as you make you think about it, right? So there are, there are much, much worse uh, countries out there. But that's what we're talking about. We're talking about, well, you're including broccoli and that improves things from, from the, standards, the, the standard deviation, right? But that's not a great baseline. I mean, those people are sick. They're unhealthy. They're unwell. I mean, anything's going to improve it. Um, first of all, you know, broccoli did not exist all that long ago. That is a manufactured, man-made plant. So we can't say that that's something we evolved on. I can't say that's something that's necessary to life because it didn't exist when we were evolving biologically, right? So that's, that's first and foremost. Also, you know, we're not comparing this to whole food plant-based diet. Uh, against or a whole food plant based right. diet, or or even just adding broccoli in with a whole food meat based diet, right? And so uh, there has been that study. It's only one. It was done in 1930. It was with the, the Maasai in, in Africa and the Akikuyu, who are a neighboring tribe, and they intermarried, so they're genetically similar. Akikuyu were mostly plant based, whole food plant based, no no big chemicals and nonsense being run on it, uh, and the Maasai eating mostly meat, milk, and blood. And they found the Maasai were on average five inches taller. Uh, 23 pounds heavier lean body mass and 50% stronger. Uh, the Akuyu had um, uh, bone deformities, teeth deformities, dental caries, chest infections, uh, tropical ulcers, all sorts of different infections and problems and a bunch of uh, mineral and vitamin deficiencies. We just see right there, okay, compared to what? Compared to a whole food plant-based diet, whole food meat-based diet wins every time sure. okay so yeah. you know maybe add in broccoli to the akikuyu i don't know maybe that would be better than the than the stuff that they're eating you add it to the Maasai, it's probably going to get worse um so that's important so the quality of their evidence is, is very important as well you know where what are they basing this on you know again a lot of these things will have to be epidemiological but there's not going to be any randomized controlled trial just adding in broccoli and looking at you know cancer rates all cause mortality 20 years down the track that doesn't that study doesn't exist to my to my knowledge. And again, it would be compared to the standard, you know, nonsense diet. Yeah. Um, but so so if you're saying, I mean, they're saying this is this is a big, you know, superfood. You find one chemical in something that's like good and or you think is good, you're saying it's a superfood. What else is it coming with? Right? You know, it's coming with oxalates, it's coming with uh, tannins and lectins and all these other sorts of things and phytic acid that are going to bind and strip the nutrients out of your body and make it impossible for you to absorb nutrients you're going to block uh, protease and lipase you can't even break down the food that you've eaten and you have to excrete it all these sorts of different things that get in the way so if your fate as well is a bit funny too because a lot of people are actually showing this it's actually quite toxic it, yeah. it, it causes you to release all these different factors that are anti-inflammatory and so uh, it's so great for you. Why are they releasing those things? They're releasing them in response to sulforaphane to clear the sulforaphane to get it the hell out of you. 
Is that what they would call hormesis? So you could argue that. You could argue that you know that was causing that that anti-inflammatory effect to clear this stuff out, and that that had a, a, then a knock-on effect, and maybe you know at a certain level, right? But you know you, mm-hmm. you could overwhelm your system's capacity, uh, you know, to to deal with this, and that could be harmful. But at the same time, you know, is it hormetic? You know, it, is any of that actually overflowing, or we're just looking at this and saying, well, that's an anti-inflammatory, that's good for you, and looking no further because we do do that sometimes, and we did that with cholesterol. Yeah. You know, we, we said cholesterol is bad, which it's not. And we said, okay, this drug lowers cholesterol, therefore it's good. And didn't look at outcomes further than that. Didn't look at, you know, does this actually decrease cardiovascular disease? Right. Does this increase stroke rate? Does this increase uh, heart disease or, or, or heart attack rate? And they found that actually more recently, since 2015, they've done big studies with like 60,000 uh, plus people over the age of 65. They actually found that no, no, it actually doesn't decrease uh, uh, heart attacks and strokes and actually... It might look that it's actually increasing. That. It's not just like, well, this does this effect, and we want that effect, therefore it's good. Okay, what else happens? What happens next, right? So it's in, it's yeah. causing a response for your body to clear the sulforaphane, and we think that that chemical is good, that response is good. But is it? You know, we don't, we don't necessarily yeah. know that. But it would be if it, if it was a, a, a net benefit, that would be you know a hormetic effect. Um, but is it a hormetic effect in the whole? with everything else in total, all the other things that, that you brought to bear. And I'm not saying that, you know, broccoli is the worst thing ever. I'm just saying water is much more muddy uh, than people make it out to be. And just because yeah. it has one chemical that's maybe good for you, maybe it has this hormetic effect, any chemical that's hormetic, dose that's hormetic, and then after that it's toxic. So how do you, where, where's the stopping line there? They don't tell you that. They don't say like, hey, broccoli is good until this point, and then you need to stop. You know, it's just something to think about that these that these things aren't necessarily uh, all, all they're cracked up to be. Yeah, I appreciate that. And yeah, often you have to eat like four to five, six cups of broccoli. And I'm like, I can't even eat one cup. If I were to measure that out, that's crazy. Um, so, and then there's uh, the fiber perspective. Yeah, well, I, I was just going to say with sulforaphane, sulforaphane is actually toxic to the plant itself. Like this is, this is a known toxin. Right. So sulforaphane is actually sequestered in, in different components. So it's like one of those little glow sticks or things that you crack it yeah, and the yeah. two chemicals glow, you know, go together, has this chemical reaction, right? So the, uh, the plant, the broccoli and other plants that have this actually sequester the, the two constituents in separate parts. And when, it, and when somebody starts chewing it, starts crushing it, there's a crush response that actually releases them and they bind together to make sulforaphane, which is completely toxic. To the plant oh, and to okay. others, and th- so that that is clearly a defense mechanism. That's clearly yeah. a chemical that's being released as a defense, right? And so you bite into this and you start chewing it, and all of a sudden it's releasing sulforaphane, right? That's normally toxic to the plant. It's toxic to you too. Um, yeah. They do this with different cyanogenic glycosides that exist in 2,500 different plants that we know about, including almonds, um, and you know, like the pit of a of a, a peach. You crack that open, and inside it looks like sort of a shriveled up almond. That's called a bitter almond. And I'm just like, it's crazy enough. This is what they uh, they can use in like baking. They can get like a, uh, a you know a concentrated sort of almondy flavor and make like marzipan mm-hmm. and things like that. That's because there's a ton of cyanide in there. Like one or two of those can kill you. Now if you swallow that whole, you know, not going to do much. To, not going to do anything for you either. But if you chew it, then it releases these different chemicals that then combine and react to then release <clears throat> cyanide. And that, again, yeah. is this defense mechanism that, that they're using. So, you know, these plants, we're not in the Garden of Eden. You know, God did not yeah. put these here for us to, you know, just live on. They, they, you know, these things, you know, created these chemicals millions of years before we existed. They're going to be here millions of years after we're gone. And, you know, they didn't make them millions of years ago because it's someday some, you know, little, you know, humans are going to be eating this and just, oh, I just love them so much. I just want to, you know, increase their anti-inflammatory drive. Like it's, um, they made this to defend themselves and they're trying to defend themselves. They're trying to be toxic to the animals that eat them. That is their nature. That's how they survive. And again, broccoli didn't exist. We have cultivated yeah. it and, uh, you know, in different sort of, you know, aggressive sort of, you know, uh, agricultural uh, cultivation um, to make this thing so Either way you look at it, this didn't exist when we were coming around. It's not something we need. And, you know, I try to just keep it simple 
and just like, you know, what do we evolve on? What is our biology? Do we need sulfurophane? Is that something that's essential to us? No, it is absolutely mm-hmm. not. And so thank you. I can do without yeah. whether or not there's a hormetic dose. I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, briefly, just cause every time broccoli gets mentioned, I see these, uh, these, uh, graphics on online of like broccoli, cauliflower, and some other plants all kind of were grown from the mustard seed or mustard plant. Um, I think that's the one. And I have being a Christian and having that background, I always think about the parable that Jesus gives about the mustard seed being the smallest of the seeds and it being like the kingdom of God is like this mustard seed, but it's going to grow like nothing can stop it type of thing. And I'm like, that's ironic because physically the mustard seed continues to kind of grow. And a lot of people are eating things from that very, um, I suppose, that very uh, seed and plant. Uh, yeah. It was, it was funny just as, as a sort of an aside, it just reminded me, but there's a lot of people that think that um, actually wheat are the dominant species on earth because they've actually like cultivated and enslaved humanity to like, like grow and replicate and produce them and just, just make them breed and breed and breed and just make trillions and trillions and trillions of these things. And then we're just a slave to them to like keep producing them and reproducing them and reproducing them and replanting them. And it's sort of yeah. funny to think about, uh, but you could think about it that way that we are working to, you know, perpetuate this species that is definitely at an advantage for us having done that. You know, we are, they're just getting generation after generation after generation after generation, which is sort of the meaning of life. That's what, that's what life wants to do is, is make more life. 